Welcome to Real World Facilitation, where we are putting an end to boring meetings and workshops. Today, we're talking about stakeholder analysis. How do you do it? Why do you do it? And how do you make sure it's successful? So stakeholder defines anybody involved uh, around a project or any change that you're trying to make happen. There will be stakeholders. Stakeholders might be people in the project team that you need to do things. It might be the teams that you need to influence. I don't know if you're trying to introduce a new piece of technology uh, that you want everybody to use, then the users have become stakeholders. You'll certainly have senior managers who are stakeholders. You'll have external people potentially who are stakeholders, but your customers of an organization or people that just care about what you're doing uh, in your organization. So what we need to do in stakeholder analysis is understand who these people are um, and what is their influence on your project or change. Um, and so we use a two by two matrix to do that. So here's how you run a stakeholder analysis session. You have your project team probably in a room, maybe a, a wider group of people. These work well with up to maybe 12 people in the room. Less than that's helpful too, just to make sure everybody's speaking. I always think that optimal group size is something like six or seven, where you've got a diversity of opinion, but everybody's probably gonna speak and say something. Once you get to 10, you've probably got a couple of people who don't really say anything throughout your session. You need to start with uh, your matrix. So put your matrix up on the wall and here is a graphic that explains what your matrix needs to cover. So what you can see along the bottom here is the influence. So that's from low to high. What we mean by influence is how much this person or group of people ne are needed to make your project a success. So in the instance of I don't know your technology project we're rolling out this new software um, your users probably highly influential. You need them to be using this software, uh, particularly if you've got a, a pilot user group or something, particularly uh, high influence on your project. So might be a senior leader, for example, who is going to support you with a budget uh, and make sure you're mentioned and uh, important enough across the organization. They're probably pretty influential. So on the vertical axes, you need to write the word interest. So what we're doing here is understanding how interested in your project or change this stakeholder or stakeholder group is. Uh, so they might have a very keen interest uh, in making this thing happen. Uh, if it's, uh, I know, our tech, continue our tech example, if it's a finance system, uh, then probably your director of finance is very keen for it to happen. So they would be very interested in this project being successful. There will be others who are pretty indifferent about whether or not it's successful, and you may well have people who are totally against it, much prefer the way they're doing things now, don't want a new system or process or whatever your change is. So um, what you'll do, you've created those axes on the wall, and then it's really a simple uh, t task of talking to the project group about the who, so getting them to tell you who needs to go on our stakeholder matrix. Now. Bit quick tip for you here, it's better to work with individuals than large groups. So I've worked with um, organizations where you might take, I don't know, schools or GPs uh, and treat them as one group. That's really tough because they're not one individual. It's very difficult to uh, immediately think about what actions you need to take with a whole massive group of folks. So individuals helps on a national scale program you obviously aren't going to list every individual. There's 25,000 schools in the UK, so you probably don't want a name for every one of those. Um, but let's think about it for our tech project. So we might have you know, a, a few people. We start off with the director of finance. Uh, let's, let's talk to the group about where this person belongs on our matrix. So are they interested in the project? Well, we've established for our example, it's a finance software that's being rolled out. They're very interested. Um, are they influential in this? Well, probably your director of finance is going to be very influential. They've probably got a budget that they can help uh, and they can certainly make people focus on this project. So we would put them in the top right hand corner of our matrix. Um, and we keep doing that with all of the stakeholders that, that we can think of within reason. We don't want to sort of spend hours and hours on this. There is a challenge with all stakeholder analysis. 
and all analysis is that you can spend a long time doing it. They talk about analysis paralysis, where it stops you doing any of the actual work because you spend all your time trying to understand and get to the sort of real deep analysis. The purpose of a stakeholder analysis session is to get your team agreed on who are the important people uh, and who do we collectively think are the people we need to spend our time with. Uh, so just bear that in mind in the detail you go to. But you might have a dozen, 20 even, different kind of stakeholders that you need to place on your matrix. And here's how we think about our matrix. So our top right hand corner, those are the people, as we've said, high influence, high interest. These are your key players. So these are the people that you need to keep on board, keep informed, make sure they're close to the work that you're doing. You need them, they need you, this is a great group of people for you. In our bottom left hand corner, these are people that you don't really need. So they're not that influential to you, to, to your project, and they're not that interested either. So these are bystanders. So you can largely ignore them. Probably you want to send some comms to them, so a, a newsletter every now and again, or just update them in, in a sort of regular company meeting or project update. Uh, but you, you can largely ignore this group of people. Next is our top left hand corner. So these are people who are really interested and keen, but actually you don't really need them at all or not very much. So these are your champions. They are a really useful group for you because you don't really need them, but you can deploy them. You can have them do things for you, get them involved in project groups, have them influencing other people. There's lots of stuff you can do. These are a kind of resource pool for you of people that are keen to be involved, but actually you don't have a great need for them to be there. So you can use them on, on all kinds of tasks around your project. Finally, our bottom right hand corner. These are the people we really need but they're not interested. So these are our opponents. These are real challenges for us because you need them. They've got to participate in some way in your project, so you need some strategies for how you're going to do that. Remember, you can use your champions for this group. So if they are close to these people, have maybe they have some influence over these people, ask them to go and find out what's going on really, get more information, and start building your plans for how you're gonna get these people on board and interested. So that broadly, that is your analysis done. So you've got a kind of map now, you've talked about the key people that you need to, your groups of stakeholders or individuals, and you've got a bit of a view of so where people uh, are located in your matrix. That's often where stakeholder analysis ends. And that's why it goes wrong so many times, because that's all very well, but you've just spent a happy hour talking. Some benefit of that. What's really key is now the action planning. So probably the people in the bottom right-hand corner, you might want some or all of those to move into your top right-hand corner, or indeed to try and move them into the bottom left-hand corner. So that is, they, we are gonna care less about them. We're gonna re-engineer, rethink about the project so that we don't need them, or we're gonna find ways of encouraging them and incentivizing them to move into the top right-hand corner. So what you need for that is to create a table uh, of actions and put the stakeholders that you want to change or influence and move between one of these groups. You need each of those to be listed in the table and talk about what you're going to do, the action planning, and importantly, who is going to do it and by when are they going to do it. That will change your stakeholder analysis session from a mapping session to a genuine analysis and action-focused session really important. You have limited resources in any project. You need to know where to focus. That's what this session is all about, finding out which of these stakeholders we've really got to put some energy behind. In the action planning, remember you've got a whole range of things to think about in influencing and engaging people. You can be trying to encourage and incentivize them by talking about the benefits to them of getting on board with this project, so therefore raising their interest in the project. But remember, you also can talk to their boss about making them 
be more interested and directing them to be so. You can look at performance objectives and have them uh, adjusted so that they have this as part of their own personal performance objectives. There's a number of things and tactics you can deploy depending on how much you need to move these people uh, from, from the bottom right hand corner to somewhere else on your matrix. I have a watch word if you like, uh, an acronym really, the what's in it for me question. If you cannot answer what's in it for me, for each of these groups that you need, then your project is unlikely to be fully successful. Very unlikely, arguably impossible. So it's really key. And remember, it's not always gonna be a positive outcome. It might be that what's in it for you is that you get to keep your job. So there can be some things which, you don't wanna go there, but if you need to, that is a tactic you need to keep in mind uh, throughout all of this stuff. So that is stakeholder analysis. Um, please feel free to download our guide to all kinds of facilitation methodologies. So there's a link in our comments below that you can use to download that. And our icebreakers guide if you're interested in uh, learning some great icebreakers that work every time. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.